This is the year two differentiation test. Uh, Starting with question one, where you need to use the quotient rule. Let's write it out like this y equals ln x over x. Uh, let's call that u, call this v. Now, the, the quotient rule is in the formula book dy by dx equals v du by dx minus u db by dx all over v squared it looks slightly different in the formula book but i prefer to write it in this form using v's and u's rather than fx's and gx's it's always a good idea i think to write down at the write down at the side what each of these are and what you get when you differentiate them so differentiate ln x you get 1 over x v is x and dv by dx is 1 so now we've worked these out we can uh, put them substitute them into this formula here it's important you get the formula the right way around as I said it is in the formula book but I would just learn it and unlike the product rule you have to make sure you get things in the right way around it has to be v at the front here um, and u second because it's because you're subtracting the order you do this matters so let's substitute everything in v is x du by dx is 1 over x u is ln x and dv by dx is 1 all over v squared so it's all over x squared now as you can see these are going to cancel here just to leave you with a 1 so you're going to get 1 minus ln x all over x squared and that isn't really going to simplify anymore so let's let's just leave it like that question 2 it's it's our old friend the chain rule let's write it in this form y equals uh, square root of 1 plus 4x squared as I said we're going to need to use the chain rule here uh, dy by dx equals uh, dy by du times by du by dx so I would begin by writing actually let's let's just change that into a half so it's 1 plus 4x all squared now if you're not sure what to what to write uh, what to substitute in for you I would just think uh, where would you put a bracket so if you look at the original question where would you put a bracket well we've already done it really but you put a bracket underneath the square root so everything underneath the square root you can let u equal that 1 plus 4x squared and now you'll be able to differentiate this so whenever you use the chain rule you just want to do a substitution that will make that will leave you with something that's easy to differentiate so this is easy to differentiate now uh, because we just get dy by du is a half u to the minus a half You've also got to do du by dx, but that's easy as well. That's just 8x. And now you just multiply them together. So we've got a half u to the minus a half times by 8x. And that's going to give you 4x u to the minus a half. Uh, u is 1 plus 4 x squared remember so we've got all of this to the minus a half uh, so you you could you could finish off by writing this as 4x over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared although you probably get full marks for that um, this this just looks a little bit nicer I think I'm sure you you might be able to find a quick way of doing this um, but I've, I would always always recommend just writing out the chain rule setting it out like this like this 
and then multiplying the two things you get here and here together. Um, so I would do it like that. For part three, you've got this equation here. Now it's worth just having a quick recap about question one. In question one, we had a function of x divided by another function of x. That's why we used the quotient rule. Whereas in question three, we've got a function of x multiplied by another function of x. So we're going to need to use the product rule, which is usually simpler than than the quotient rule, uh, but I still recommend that you write it out like this. Write down what u du by dx v and dv by dx are before you substitute it into the formula. Uh, so here u doesn't doesn't matter which you call u and v in the product rule because the formula for the product rule d dy by dx, as I'm sure you know, is u dv by dx plus v du by dx. And since you're adding rather than subtracting, you don't need uh, to worry about which way around you do these. So let's, uh, let's call this u and we'll call this v. And then u is x, so du by dx is 1, v is cos 3x, and to differentiate that, uh, you're going to get minus 1, sorry, you're going to get minus 3 sine 3x. The reason you get that is really from the chain rule that we used in the previous question. So if, if you weren't sure why this works, this derivative here, you could use the chain rule. You could use the chain rule to check um, where you let where you would let u equal three x. Uh, but it, I mean, it's it's quite quick to do. You just differentiate, just differentiate three x, stick it at the front, and because you're going from cos to sine, you need a negative there. Okay, so so now we've got all these. We can stick them into our formula, our product rule formula, uh, which is going to give us x dv by dx is minus three sine three x plus v, which is cos three x, and all of that multiplied by d u by dx, which is one, and so, I mean, that's the answer, but let's just tidy it up a bit. We'll get minus 3x sine 3x plus cos 3x. And that's not really going to simplify. So let's leave that as the final answer. Question four, we've got to uh, prove that the derivative of cot x is minus cos x squared. Now that result is given in the formula book, but you're, you're asked to prove that it's true here. So let's start by writing y equals cot x. It tells you in the question you're probably going to need to use the derivatives of sine x and cos x. So let's change that into cos x over sine x. And then, well, it is quite similar to question one because you can see we've got a function of x divided by another function of x so we're going to need to use the quotient rule that's u that's v so as usual I would write these at the side u equals cos x du by dx equals minus sine x v is sine x and dv by dx is um, cos x. So now we've worked all these out, we can use the quotient rule now. Quotient rule. As I said in question one, it's in the formula book. Um, but I prefer to write it like this v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. And if you substitute all those values 
on the right hand side into the quotient rule we'll get sine x d by dx is minus sine x minus u which is cos x times by dv by dx which is also cos x and that's all divided by b squared which is sine squared x uh, we've just got a bit of tidying up to do now the numerator you can see we're going to get we're going to get a minus sine squared here and we're also going to get a minus cos squared so well let's just write that down so we'll get minus sine squared x minus cos squared x all over sine squared x um, as I'm sure you know that numerator will factorize to minus 1 sine squared x plus cos squared x all over sine squared x and uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x this will all equal 1 so we can get rid of we can get rid of the sine squared x plus cos squared x because it equals 1 so this becomes minus 1 over sine x uh, sorry sine squared x uh, which is good news because that is minus cosec squared x which is where we wanted to finish so we have proved that the derivative of cotex is minus cosec squared x